This is the Geek in Review, and I'm going to be talking about The Boys, Season 3, Episode 4. So if you haven't seen it, this is going to contain spoilers. So yeah, like those first three last week, they were really heavy-hitting episodes. It left us with Homelander and Butcher being the worst versions of themselves. And before I get too much into this, I just want to say that this season, including this episode, has had some of the most violent, weirdest, gory comic book deaths that I've ever seen. Look, they just top it one death after another, but as always, I'll get to that in a minute. And what's weirder than that is we learn that Soldier Boy had a singing career apparently. So, we might get more hits, I don't know, but MM is still on the warpath after what Soldier Boy done to his family. And if you have read the comics, you know that they are changing this up quite a bit. Mother's Milk's family, including like his daughter and you know his mum and his dad and his brother, were all sort of involved with Vought and Compound V in one way or another. So I wonder if that is in any way going to tie into why Soldier Boy killed them, if there's going to be any sort of twist or reveal. I don't know. Uh, we're going to have to wait and see on that one. But speaking about reveals, Butcher has sort of let the cat out of the bag. Huey knows about the temporary V, but he's keeping the rest of it for himself. He doesn't want to share his toys. And I really feel that this season is between Homelander and Butcher, especially in this episode. The rest of the characters, especially ones like, you know, Queen Maeve and A-Train in the Deep, they sort of feel like they're really in the background in this season so far. And that's perfectly fine. We're three seasons in, so they've got to sort of change the tempo a little bit. But speaking of members of the Seven, Homelander has taken on fake news by, of course, creating some himself. He's planting the seeds that there's rotten apples at Vought, and Edgar is on the warpath. And initially, I was a little bit like, oh, this is going to kick off, and then when you see what Edgar's up to, he's basically just trying to give Homelander a slap on the wrist. He thinks that Homelander is still on the leash, when in fact he's ripped it and he's jumped over the garden fence. And the fact that Edgar was willing to go so light on Homelander actually came back to bite him in the ass, because Homelander ends up turning Victoria Newman, so instead of implicating Homelander in all the sort of dirty business that Vought's been up to, she turns the tide on Edgar and that is that man, he is out of the building. He's got played his own game, but he sort of might still come out on top. He knows that Homelander and Ashley are basically going to be left to run Vought and neither one is particularly competent or good or would be good in that position I'd, be, I'd imagine. And he also points out something that the block between Homelander and the public has always been the management of Vought and now that that's not there, although he sort of exposed his views and thoughts to the world, his actions haven't really been exposed yet. And you know the guy's always going to be up to some shit so that's going to get caught up somehow or another. But yeah, with this whole Edgar thing, I hope there's going to be a bit more or another head-to-head -head between Homelander and Edgar because these guys were brilliant. In fact, whoever Edgar went up against, whether it was Butcher or a superhero or whatever, he was always one step ahead. But this seems to have, let's say, it's sort of been his downfall. But Butcher and the boys are still going to Russia to find the weapon that killed Soldier Boy. And I do have a theory on this. I think I might be wrong, given what's happened in this episode, but I'm still going to throw it out there. I think that Edgar arranged for Soldier Boy's disappearance, because if you think about it this way, he's used Victoria Newman as a front for the Vought opposition, so I can see him using Russia as a front for the soup's weapon. It keeps the blame off him in America, and if the plan did fail, it means that they would go after the Russians, not Edgar and not Vought. But as always, we're going to have to wait and see on that. The weapon that they use to kill soups in the comic book is very different. It's a bit more of a virus. And given what's happened in the world in the last few years, I can understand why they changed it. Also, something that you shoot a laser blast at is a bit more dramatic and a bit more of a cinematic televisual effect than something that you can't see. 
But anyway, after last week in Homelanders, birthday recording, Huey isn't best pleased that Homelander and Starlight are dating, at least in the public eye. And talk about balls. Huey, he doesn't stand up to Homelander, but when Homelander does his whole shtick of intimidating him and trying to be funny and cocky about it, Huey doesn't budge an inch and I was really impressed by this. He's usually a big scaredy cat in the first one to sort of jump when there's trouble, but this time he's really like standing up. He must love Starlight if he's willing to get ripped apart like that for it. And he's not the only member of this cast that's not budging this week. A-Train wants Vought to deal with the soup in his neighbourhood that he feels has been a little bit discriminatory and racist. But he's a little bit too busy being Kendall Jenner in that Pepsi or Coke advert from a few years ago. So the seven aren't really interested. And this is one thing that I love about the boys is it brings things from our world, like, you know, Scientology or Me Too, or in this case, a celebrity doing a fucking stupid advert thinking it's going to change the world. And it just takes the absolute piss out of it. I can't wait to see what they're going to do with the rest of the season. And I imagine they've got some ideas for next season as well with everything that's going on at the moment. Now, as I said a minute ago, some of the characters in this season, like Maeve, are taking a bit of a back seat, but she is featured in this episode quite a bit. She tells Starlight that she gave Butcher and the boys the V, and they sort of form this little alliance. I mean, they've never really been in opposition to each other, but they're trying to recruit other superheroes to take on Homelander, and they think that they need a bit somewhere on 7 and 9 in order to do this. And with this plotting and the fact that Maeve has been a bit of a back character this season so far, makes me think that she's not going to make it out alive. She's sort of done everything that she can do other than directly fight Homeland. But the boys land in Russia and before Nina can help them out, she wants them to take care of some business for her. So Butchop does what he does and sends the female out on a hit. And this season, the female is getting some growth as well. She's smiling a lot more, which is very weird because you've never seen her smile, particularly in the first couple of seasons. And we see her in a dress, and I like the fact that she's not used to this. She instantly can't sort of handle herself in high heels walking along a cobbled street, but she's more than adequate at peeling a guy's face off. And speaking about the kills in this episode, she gets some of the best ones in peeling guys left and right with Vought 7 dildos. Now, I don't know if I can show this on YouTube, so I'm not going to show it. If you've seen the episode, you'll know what I mean. And if you haven't, go and watch the episode, man, because if you've never seen a grown man impaled in the face by a 8-inch dildo, now's the time. She is becoming a little bit more self-aware, or at least aware of her situation, how she fits into the dynamic of the group. She's tired of being Billy Butcher's super weapon. And there is a female in this episode. She's getting used by Butcher. Victoria is getting used by Edgar. Victoria is also getting used by Homelander, but is using Homelander. And yeah, there's a lot of just all this and people sort of getting worn down throughout this. And I think that's going to be something that continues for the rest of the season. But Butcher still has some V left, so he doesn't really need the female, at least every day. He can still be his own weapon as long as he's got the V. And Huey wants in on the action as well, and if you've read the comic books, one of the sort of first main divergences in terms of story that we get is they're super powered pretty much straight away with the artificial compound V in the comics, and it's taken us up to three seasons to get to this point. But during the mission to get the weapon, Butcher's got to expose the fact that he's got the V, and so does Huey as well, and yeah, the kills here, fairly solid. Huey's kill is almost identical to his in the comic books when he makes his first attack on Blarney Clock and just puts his hand right through the guy. Also, there's a callback to episode 1 and 2 of season 1 when they kill Translucent, because Huey's got Translucent power as well, whether he's got anything else, we'll need to wait and see. And I do wonder, are Frenchie and MM going to get the juice as well? And if so, what powers are they going to get? The fact that this has come so late and the powers are a little bit different from the comics is very exciting for me. But let me know what you think below. 
What powers would you like to see Frenchie and MM and maybe any of the other humans in the show get? What about Ashley? Oh, Ashley would be good with a power. She'd settle some fucking scores, I'll tell you that for nothing. And the episode ends with the boys finding Soldier Boy and they discover him instead of the weapon. But here's a question, what if he's the weapon? Because as soon as he gets out of the sort of stasis pod that we've seen in the trailer, he blasts the female and that's in the trailer as well. But what you don't see is the female doesn't regenerate. And earlier on in this episode, we see her get shot in the head and get up less than 30 seconds later. So what is it that they've done to Soldier Boy? Because what happened to the female really looks somewhat to what happened to Black Noir in episode 2 and 3 when we've seen those flashbacks in 1984. And yeah, this is very interesting to me. I did think, like I say, that Edgar was staging all this. Maybe he'd arranged for Soldier Boy to be kept as a sort of indefinite prisoner unless he needed him. That does seem like a sort of what Edgar thing to do, to not kill, just to sort of hold him back in case something happens. Or in case he was maybe going to use Soldier Boy against Homelander or another superhero. But man, what an episode. Although the pace was a little bit slower, for me, I think that's probably because we got three episodes last week and we're only getting one this week. But this show remains one of the best superhero, if not the superhero shows on TV, if you're asking me. It's inventive, funny, and those deaths just keep getting crazier and crazier without being that cringe. I love the show. I know I've not posted one of you to the first three episodes yet. I'm going to be doing that over the weekend, but I thought I'd try and get caught up. Because I've still got Star Trek and Obi Wan to go, and for all mankind as well, so I'm going to be a hell of a busy. So if you want to see all of those, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out, and leave a like on the video as well if you've made it this far. I want to hear your theories on what's going to happen with the rest of this season, or even if you've read the comic books, what you might be looking forward to. Let me know in the comments below, or as always, you can follow me on Twitter at the Geeks Reviews. My name's Al. As always, thanks for watching.